What's up, everybody? I'm Katie. And I'm Jesse. Welcome back to our course on intermediate iOS animations. In this video, you'll revisit view animations, but with a shiny new API. You'll create your first animation using UI View Property Animator. Let's go. By the end of the video, your project should look like this. You'll create a scale animation for this widget list to make it scale up and fade in when the app launches. UI View Property Animator is a class for creating view animations that was introduced along with iOS 10. It doesn't replace the Animate with Duration APIs you learned about in the beginning course, nor does it replace Core Animation, which you'll learn about later in this course. So what's the difference between the view animations you already know and property animators? The Animate with Duration methods are basically fire and forget. They feature a simple established API, and they're great for animations that you don't want to touch after they've started running. UI View Property Animator was designed to easily create animations that are interactive, interruptible, and even reversible. You can adjust property animators dynamically, adding new animations or completion handlers as an animation is running. They also tap into more of the underlying power of core animation, allowing you to use custom easing curves and more advanced spring animations. You can do some fancy things with property animators, but here are the bare bones of how to get started using them. To create a basic property animator animation, first create an animator and specify its duration and an easing curve. Add animations to it, add a completion handler if you need one, and finally start the animation. Let's give it a try. Build and run the demo start project to take a look at the app we'll be animating for the next few videos. This looks pretty familiar. Like an astronaut's iPhone lock screen. The view controller displays a search bar, a single widget, and an edit button at the bottom. The app's basic functionality and layout are already implemented for you. This way, the project is all set up for you to experiment with UI View Property Animator animations. So what's the animation plan? What do we want to happen? The first thing we're going to animate is this widget table view. We want it to scale up and fade in as the app launches. If you went through the beginning iOS animations course, you've done both of these things with views before. You'll find that doing the same with property animators is not wildly different. We'll start working in lock screen view controller .swift. There are some helpful to do notes to guide us. The first step is to set table view up for animation in view will appear. So set the from values for this animation. Now when the app launches and before the view controller's view appears, the table view will be transparent and scaled down to two-thirds its size. Next, we need to create the animation, and that should happen after the view controller's view appears on screen. In view did appear, I'm going to comment out the steps we learned in the slides. You don't have to, but it might help you keep track of what you're doing. First, create the animator object. Then add animations. Add a completion handler. And finally, start the animation. Make your first property animator called Scale. Let's start with one of the simplest convenience initializers, the one with just duration, curve, and an optional animation's closure. We don't need to use the animation's closure, so we'll ignore that bit. And now we've got an animator instance with a duration of half a second and a standard ease-in timing curve. For property animators, the standard easing curves are enumeration cases. But in function, they match up to the curve options you already know from Animate with Duration APIs. We're going to stick with ease-in. All right, we've got an animator object with no animations. Adding animations is the next step. There are two properties of the table view that we're animating, transform and alpha. Start with the alpha and the most basic add animations method. You use add animations to add closures full of code, usually property values to animate to, just like you do with UIView.animate with duration. But you've only taken care of one of the properties we want animated. What about the transform? This is a key difference when using an animator. You can add multiple animation blocks to an animator object, and they don't have to be added at the same time. You can even add animations with different delays. Try using the add animations method that has a delay factor parameter.
We've set table views transform to identity, which is the same as removing any transformations applied to it. In this case, it's setting the scale back to one in each dimension. It's important to note that this delay factor parameter is not a delay in seconds like you are used to using with the animate with duration methods. Correct. Because you can add animations like this even after the animation has started running, property animators use a delay factor. This is a value between 0 and 1 which maps to a percentage of the animator's remaining duration at the time the animation is added. In this case, the remaining duration is your entire half a second, and the delay factor is 1 quarter, so the transform animation will start after an eighth of a second. All of the animation we wanted is taken care of. Now we can add completion handlers. You don't have to add them. With the Animate with Duration APIs, you would often just use nil for the completion parameter. With property animators, you don't add a completion closure. Let's add one, though, just to see how it works. This is just printing something to the console. But you could use this for any kind of post-animation work you want to do, like cleaning up temporary views, resetting positions, or literally whatever you'd like. And just like with adding animations, you can add multiple completion closures. You can add them whenever you'd like, but they will execute in the order you added them to the animator. This would have been the end of our work with UI View Animate with Duration, but if we try to build and run now... Nothing will happen. But you can see that the setup we did for the animation is working. The table view with the widgets in it is indeed transparent. Our comments tell us what to do to get this animation working. Just use the start animation method. That's it. Build and run again. Cool. Now it looks like our widgets are sort of floating up to us from underwater. It gives a great sense of depth. Is this the end? This seems kind of messy to have all this code just sitting around in your view controller. Allow me to show you a trick or two. We're going to abstract all of this code away so that we've only got one line here to create and run our animation. Jump over to animatorfactory.swift. We've created this class just to store all of our animations for this project as static methods. We're using a class here, but you may use an enum or a struct in your own projects if you'd like. Create a new static method called scaleUp. It will take a UI view and return a UI view property animator. I see what we're doing now. Head back to lock screen view controller .swift, grab everything in view to appear, and cut it out with command X. Then back in animatorfactory.swift, paste it all into scale up with command V. We've got a little bit of cleanup work to do. Replace both uses of self.tableView with the method's view parameter. Almost done. Now, instead of starting the animator, we just want to return it. And then, back in lock screen view controller, in view did appear, use the static method we just made to create an animator and start it. We've created a scale up animator, passed in the view we want to animate, table view, and started the animation all in one line. Build and run to make sure everything is still working. There's our animation running exactly the same as before. Now, if all we're doing is creating an animator and then just running it right away, and we aren't planning to interact with it at all afterwards, we could just use the old animate with duration API. But what if I really, really want to use a property animator, but want the simplicity of that single method call, and I don't want to have to manually start the animator? If you really, really want to do that, you can use the running animator method like this.
Aside from the completion closure, this takes exactly the same parameters as UIView Animate with Duration. The delay is even a time interval instead of the delay factor we talked about. There is one significant difference though. The running property animator method actually returns a property animator, and that property animator is already running. And because you can interact with running property animators, that means if you store the result of this method, you can still add animations or completions to that running animator later on. We're not actually going to use this method here. But you may find it comforting to know it's there, if you want it. That's it for this video tutorial, but don't leave yet, we have a challenge waiting for you. Your challenge is to add a constraint animation to this project to make the date label and everything constrained to it drop down into place when the app launches. Like this! It may be easier than you think. You already have all of the knowledge you need to do this. We hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.